Victor, how are you? Victor, I'm so glad you're here. Look, I've been looking forward to our interview for a while. I'm now going to make you the presenter, and we should be able to hear your voice, everyone. Victor Zubarev, uh, again, specialist. Waiting to hear your voice, buddy, and see your screen. Oh, good morning, Dale. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to this. Welcome, Victor. You know, in fact, this is a first. You know, I've never done this before an interview on FX Street or Face, but mm -hmm. here you go. Don't you fear, because Victor's here. <laughs> He's the man, and you're going to learn a lot about Dan. Welcome, Victor Zubarev. Well, th thank you, Dale. Thank you. Coming from a musical background myself, I really appreciated that intro. <laughs> I'll tune my guitar for our next interview, Victor. So, uh, you know, we have a lot in common. We both worked on the same trading floor, although at different times and with the exchange name was different. And you spent a lot of time in Chicago. We know a lot of uh, the same people, uh, kind of the same trading generation. So, you know, it's great to have you with us and, you know, maybe you want to share a little bit about your journey and how you got involved as uh, in the business. I know you've worn many hats and uh, why and how you gravitated towards WD. Well, that's a, a pretty um, interesting um, a way to begin the interview because um, I can all go all the way back to when I was a teenager and I used to go downtown in Chicago and I used to use, watch the ticker tape over one of the uh, brokerage firm buildings, the Payne Weber building. Payne Weber doesn't exist anymore, obviously, but yeah, I always was fascinated by the numbers and I wanted to find out why the market worked the way it did. And to me, that was a big uh, mysterious question as to what makes uh, dollar prices move up and down for stocks. Um, and I got into uh, the brokerage business, uh, and I've worked all sectors of the uh, industry as a um, back office and operations, uh, compliance. Uh, I was a senior registered options principal for three years for a major uh, S&P 500 firm here in Cleveland. Um, and I was a broker on the, uh, you know, on the traditional broker side as well. Uh, so I've gone through a lot of uh, different um areas of of the business but i gravitated to technical trading okay. um probably around to be serious about it around the year 1998 and one of the things that i did i picked up a magazine from uh, a local store and it was a trader's world magazine and that was um i remember it much it still exists and it's much different uh than the than the more traditional one which has straight ahead uh, technical analysis, the uh, the one that we probably always see. Probably on the same. a bunch of ads and not the right. same kind of content. Well, right. What fascinated me was that, and so so how did I get into uh, using WD GAN? I started looking at an article in one of the magazines, and it was written by a man called T.H. Uh, Murray, and he's the author of the T.H. Uh, uh, Murray's uh, Murray Math System. And uh, he's the one who actually got me interested uh, to GAN because uh, Murray, if it wasn't for GAN, there would be no T.H. Murray, Murray Math. Oh, system. interesting. Okay. And yeah. that's how that's how the uh, the progression. A lot of people, a lot of people yeah. use Murray Math that are traders. A lot of people. Uh, yes, and and I've talked to uh, T.H. Murray, and he is a um, kind of a eccentric. Uh, you know, a uh, grade school teacher who who started this um, approach by synthesizing what Gan had had done with uh, with his method and and put a, his own spin on it. And uh, I, I think there's even less information about Murray Math out there that's legitimate than there is with uh, W. D. Gan right now. Okay. All right. So that that's an interesting story. So. Uh, you really got involved in l looking at charts and uh, started to, because you know a lot of people have a hard time wrapping their head around GAN. You know, uh, a lot of people say, you know, price actions everything, and uh, WD GAN said time's more important than price. So, 
Um, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, hearing what you have to say. I've seen some real nice tweets from you. Uh, you've also uh, probably put your own spin on uh, what you've learned over the decade. So, um, yeah, well, want, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, let me add one more thing because there's, there's a, uh, as we've talked before, when people ask me, you know, what's the best way to approach WDGAN? Because there's all kinds of um, information out there and it's it's loaded with uh, basically snippets of, of things that you can gather and use, but it's not all concentrated in one, you know, area. Uh, and the best thing I can tell you is, and, uh, and listeners out there, is that I view uh, WDGAN's work as uh, a work that's uh, uh, comprised of three separate um, method methodologies. One is a traditional swing trading method, which he developed specific rules for. The other one is the geometric um, uh, method of again angles and the square of nine. And then finally, there's a third aspect, which he himself, Gan, was reluctant to reveal to the public for obvious reasons, because if he did so, uh, he probably wouldn't have had much credibility amongst the trading public because it involved using astrological aspects applied to uh, price and charts. And so those are the three elements that I've always viewed GAN as being. Uh, uh, you know, it's still uh, that way, Victor. So uh, even in this modern age, if you bring up the planets in trading, a lot of people go, oh, you know, that doesn't work. Right. Well, let me uh, let me tell you how I got interested in that end of it, because um, when I was a kid, uh, my big uh, thing was um, uh, astronomy and uh, and and weather meteorology. And uh, every uh, when I was a teenager, every uh, Saturday, I would go down to the Adler Planetarium since I lived in went to oh. school in Chicago. And yeah. I spent like, you know, a half a day there. And to me, that was very fascinating. And uh, it's funny that I've now come around to using astrology uh, and, and astronomy as part of the, uh, uh, you know, working elements that I use to, to come up with uh, uh, targets for price and also time. Uh, the thing I wanted to mention is that uh, Bill Meridian, if you know who he is. I interviewed him once. He is, he is he is now he has written a book on eclipses, and I wanted to cover that with you real quick in a moment. But I wanted to tell you how I got interested in astro the astrological aspect as applied to to, to um, market uh, charting. I, I was in a, a grocery store one day and I picked up one of those Dell horoscope books. You no, know, yeah. they're like about you know five inches by by six right. inches. And I started reading uh, an article that he had written. He has an article in there every month regarding um, the, um, uh, his forecasts. And I thought, this guy is crazy, man. He's looking at the uh, charts to apply to uh, the stock market. And so that's how I got started. But to bring you up to date on, on where he's been lately, um, he wrote a book on eclipses because he felt that um, there was a importance of uh, where, where the eclipses occur and, and the duration of, of the eclipses uh uh have have on 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 people and and nations and countries and um in the book which i'm gonna if i can change the screen here for a moment uh let me get it here gans tunnel through the air uh this book um relates to eclipses in a in a in a strange way in that uh, gan actually opens the book with with an eclipse and closes the end of the book with another eclipse. And wow. in the book itself, Gann mentions uh, the great uh, Mississippi uh, Valley flood that occurred uh, while he was writing this book. And he had felt that it had a lot to do with the previous uh, solar eclipse that uh, foretold um, a catastrophe in, 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 in the central uh, um, portion of our country. And is that it, when it reversed it, course? Is that when the Mississippi reversed course? Or I think it did. No, actually, one. no. There was there was some some major major uh, overflow of the banks that continued okay. for literally a year and a half, wow. and, and and peaked in 1927. It began in December of 1926. Uh, okay. The, what I thought was interesting was that 
uh, just this year, everybody talked about the great eclipse of August 21. And that right. eclipse actually transversed the entire United States from, uh, the, you know, the right. northwest to southeast. And that occurred, years. It's been mm -hmm. since then. And that occurred, um, you know, uh, right after the uh, uh, August 21 solar eclipse. Um, so uh, there is a theory that um, the ancient philosophers like uh, Ptolemy, um, thought that if you take the duration of the eclipse, in this case, the one in August here was uh, six hours, uh, you, you equate one hour of an eclipse for one year's worth of time. So they would say that uh, this eclipse would actually um, have an effect on uh, our country because it went across our uh, entire United States for the next six years, since uh, one, hour, one hour equals one year and we have uh, six hours worth of eclipse. That takes us to 2023. You know, and, uh, Victor, it's funny that you bring it up because you know, the two big hurricanes hit after the eclipse, the 8.1 uh, earthquake in Mexico was after the eclipse. People that don't even, you know, uh, you know even look at eclipses, um, are saying, wow, this is kind of unusual that we're getting a lot of these geolog uh, geological events um, in such a hurry and in such quick sequence. So, so you believe that uh, that was a harbinger of what we've seen in uh, Texas and Florida and the Caribbean? Well, I, I think that it was, but I'm, I'm not the expert at, at all of this. I, I try to use as much of the um, of, of GAN's uh, methods that I am comfortable with. If I'm not comfortable with it, I will not actually um, present it or talk about it because I, okay. I feel I'm not as good at it. So um, the eclipses are fascinating to me because they, uh, they, uh, they, they are supposed to be portents of, uh, you know, something serious that's going to happen or will happen in the next, you know, few years. Um, and that's, that's always been the traditional uh, astrological um, approach to eclipses, but uh, if I can, I wanted to mention um, uh, another thing about some of the charts that I will present. I have a list of about 10 or 12 charts I, I can show you, and a lot of them have to do with the um, my personal approach to making a chart as simple as possible, but with enough elements in it to um, to come up with a, a a ground a set of ground rules for each each type of chart and uh, i've been working on uh developing my own charts for the last probably five years and i basically have uh, uh trained three uh, individuals on some of my charting methods and they're familiar with it um so you know, when i go over these charts i will try to explain as best i can on how i how i read them and um they have nothing to do with GAN. What I do is once I get my charts in place, I then try to incorporate what I have learned um, through the square of nine and um, uh, the square root method um, uh, to project uh, price targets uh, going forward. And so that's how I use GAN. I use some cool. elements of GAN, but not all of them because so that, there's just you, so much of it. Yeah, you kind of refine it down to what's actionable and that, you know, that's what people care about anyway. You know, the other is, great to talk about uh, over a, a beer or a cup of coffee or a cocktail, but right. um, you know, getting, uh, filtering it down so that it's useful to traders. That's what right. people want to know. I, I think you're absolutely right. I've, I've gone away from saying, you know, I'm a, I use GAN uh, uh, only. Uh, I've been getting away from using GAN, but I always go back to test out some of the, um, some of the uh, methods that I've, I've, I've learned, uh, that Gann would have taught his students. And so I'm gonna show you, um, so I can see change of chart here. And also I've been getting interested in uh, cryptocurrencies. As you know, it's there's been a big um, yeah. uh, social media explosion on the whole topic because people that are into the uh, uh, Bitcoin uh, are uh, so uh, enamored with it that they can't see you know, a correction coming. and um, uh, Chris Carolan, which you had on recently, I, I think he's one of the, um, the best uh, authors of, of tweeting lately saying, you know, some of these people need to get a, uh, get serious about looking at a correction here. Um, uh, 
And uh, so I have a chart here, which I call my VZ Boxer chart. By the way, I, I put these crazy initials in front of my charts because I took, uh, I, I'm playing homage to uh, Tom DeMarc. And Tom DeMarc is, you know, from uh, Wisconsin. And um, he worked with George Soros. And I think he also worked with a couple of other major uh, investment managers. But he developed his own uh, uh, rules for his charts. And of course, he labeled them with, uh, with his initials TD before the chart. So that's what I did. I'm, I'm, I'm giving homage to someone who uh, um, I read it. Give credit where credit's due. Yeah. Right. It, I and it. I think it, I think uh, his uh, his his first uh, his first book that came out probably what in the late mid or mid nineties. Uh, yeah. well, I thought was fantastic because it 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 uh, it had a totally he presented a totally new and uh, exciting approach to uh, analyzing the mark the markets um, and so this first chart that that I'm can you see this chart is that's it's my ten minute VZ boxer chart of the uh, uh, Bitcoin. And uh, if you see the, uh, the, band, the banded areas, the, that's what I call the river. That's what I call the river. And if you see the, uh, 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 the light, light blue uh, candles with the triangles above, and then there, there's the uh, uh, light um, magenta uh, triangle uh, candles, um, below uh, the red uh, uh, part of the river. Uh, those are areas where you can get long and those are areas where you can get short. Uh, underneath there is, is what I call the fish. The fish are important because they uh, actually uh, can actually uh, move with the, with the uh, candles uh, and, and change direction almost uh, uh, virtually at the same time as the uh, the trend changes, so there's almost virtual no lag. That's what I like about a, about the fish is that there's no lag. If you want an indicator that will give you uh, the ability to to, to change, uh, uh, you know, your trading um, position almost immediately. Um, the other thing is that the blue line underneath, I call it my blue line, and uh, that basically gives you overbought or oversold. Uh, the bottom section, the bottom panel with the red is uh, is my uh, version of an ATR, and I use that to project prices. So if I use the ATR, um, I double the, the ATR reading. Now, if you see at the bottom there, it says 33. Um, I'll double that, and I'll have a projection of where um, the, the trade should go in terms of uh, price target. And it works quite well in... Um, uh, doing this on a on a ten minute and a five minute uh, chart, and let me see if I can go to another one here. That's an interesting metaphor: uh, uh, the river, the fish. Mm -hmm. I thought your last two indicators might be the hook and the bait. Yeah, well, I haven't gone that far, but yeah, I like to play <laughs> with. Uh, yeah, I like to play with um, uh, with word usage on these charts because it makes. It makes for uh, it's more fun to talk about it that way, I think, than um, you know, the traditional method. And uh, they kind of work together, as you said, the fish yes. and, the, and the river, and uh, the, the, we have the triangles in there as well. Let me go to another chart here, and this is the uh, this is much different. This is the this is what I call my um, VZ full F A O U H X rather M M chart. VZ full MM. MM stands for Murray Math. So this is not, this is a fake Murray Math chart. That's why I call it the full MM. Because okay. it's not true Murray Math. It doesn't, uh, it's not set up with true Murray Math rules. Um, but it works. And so I discovered that if I applied a, a blue line on, underneath it, which you can see there, um, and used Renko, Renko uh, 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 cubes, I came up with a, uh, a decent way to uh, uh, come in with uh, entries for uh, long and entries for short. The um, the center line of the Murray Math uh, uh, section there, the white center line, you see that? Well, I call that the safety trade line. And I call it the safety trade line is because um, when prices move through there, uh, you can enter a trade usually there, 
uh, with good success. Most of the time, if the trend is strong, it will go right through the safety trade line. If it's if the trend is about to end, it'll actually stop near the safety trade line and reverse. Um, so that's 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 my uh, version of uh, uh, Murray Math's. Um, um, How do you manage risk on these signals? I, I use um I use stops underneath the uh, in this case I would use a stop underneath the uh, the last uh, if I'm I don't know if you can see my my point right there. We see it. Okay, right there. Uh -huh. I would I would use a stop underneath right there. Okay. And and there are, there are a set of rules that I have for um, uh, using the rent codes for entries. For example, uh, I would I would not enter here, but I would enter on the second after the second uh, rent code uh, uh, closes. And okay. I would stay in the trend until I go right it all the way up to here, and then I, when I see this reversal here i'll get out right here that was a nice ride okay the same thing happened back here um i wouldn't get in on this one but i would get in right here and here you saw there was resistance at the safety trade line yeah but but then it pushed through where i where i use volume uh i think volume is very important on these i discovered that these volume bars are exaggerated but they actually um lead to um Turning points. Turning points, right. Here's one example right here. Nice. Um, here's an example where uh, sometimes you'll see them at the tops. Here, here's an example of that right there is where um, buying volume came in, but right after that, it got knocked down. Here's, here's more buying volume here, which correspond with this right here. And if you notice where the safety, where I'm sorry, where the blue line comes in, when you see the blue line coming back down to these uh, bottom uh, areas right here and right here. That's another way to use the uh, the chart for entry long here and long here. Just based on oversold, overbought. Mm -hmm. It's a lot like what you what you say is you know RSI is simple and it um, it it does it it does the job if you have a set of rules that you. Um, uh, you, you use constantly. So my uh, my approach is uh, ha have a simple chart, don't overload it. Come up with a set of rules that that work all the time, and and don't um, deviate from your rules. And I wanted to mention, uh, since we're talking, um, back in um, when I was still working in Chicago, I worked for a brokerage firm called Republic Securities, and they were set up by Collins Commodities, now called Rosenthal Collins. And, and the reason they had to set up a B and BD broker dealer is because they were offering a managed um, commodities pool run by Richard J. Dennis, structured as a limited partnership. So it had to go under SEC um, um, NASD um, uh, rules. And uh, I didn't know it at the time, but uh, Richard J. Dennis was one of the co- um, uh, partners uh, that that were going to manage the fund, and in the first two years, the, they did very well. But in the third year, when the market actually peaked uh, and inflation was um, subsiding, this is uh, when Reagan got in. If you remember, there was the Carter yeah, Alter, 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 high interest rates, right? Yeah. Well, commodity prices collapsed, <clears throat> and uh, all of a sudden, Richard J. Dennis had a problem with. Uh, getting the same returns he had over the previous two years. So what did he do? He actually uh, violated his own rules and um, overtraded and got into a hole. And so they had to close out you know, the fund. So that just shows you even the big guys uh, can break their own rules and get in trouble. Great Let me story. go to another, another chart here. Even, even legends like Even Richard legends, has. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, we're back to a five-minute uh, Bitcoin uh, VZ Boxer chart. I don't know why I came up with the name Boxer, but mm, it, it works. So here's here's an example where, if you see my um, uh, triangle here with the green arrow, <coughs> that's that's your low. And I usually try to go long uh, uh, with the candle that closes above the river. In this case, I'm going to use this candle right here. It closes above the river. If you go along here at the close, 
you have this trend that you can ride up to here. You can see that the fish are already been moving higher. And you can see that the ATR I used to project the price, I projected um, 33, I think it was 59. So it hit the target. Nice. Okay, let me go to another chart. Let me see, this is number three. Uh, here's what happened after that trend peak. Um, the candles reversed. They went through the river. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, I I would take this trade right here. The candle has to close below the bottom of the river, and that's this trade right here. And you see that the fish have already reversed, and we projected a price to about right here. So the price projections are based on where you enter, not up here. Because you could say, well, why didn't you go and use this uh, uh, top up here to project the price? Because I've experimented with that. It doesn't work that way for me. It works better right here. And so you have a, a nice trade on the downside if you're going short. Okay. Um, one of my favorite uh, forex pairs is the uh, the USD JPY. I, I like the way it trades, and I like the fact that the um, Easy Boxer works very well with it. So <clears throat> here's where you would go long, right here, because you've got a candle that closes above the river. Yeah. It's an up, up triangle, and you and I projected price based on the ATR. I use that this ATR. Uh, and I doubled the ATR uh, value and I come up with a level right about here. Actually, no, back here, sorry. Nice, nice so trade. The ATR target. So if you're, if you're a trader and you want to uh, uh, figure out where you're going to go with this trade, this to me was a very accurate way to approach the whole topic of price targets because uh, new traders don't have an idea where where price may go or where they want it to go, but at least when they're here, they have some idea that they might go up to here. And so the fish you object, you, you know, your method gives you objectives. Right, your method gives you an objective, and I found that the fish was a very important component to the boxer chart because the fish actually flip right here. If you see this right here, yeah, they flip here and they stay above until they get to here. And then, then after that, it becomes a, more of a sideways. Man. You know, it's almost Rosh Hashanah. You have me thinking about gefilte fish. That's right. That's another, that's another uh, chart I should make up. The, the <laughs> fish chart. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, they, um, uh, yeah, so your methods, uh, very interesting, Victor. And, uh, you know, I don't, I know you have a lot of charts here. Do you have anything, that kind of projects with market action that we've had recently that may give some future projections or are the rest of the charts mainly just showing the history and explaining the method? Because that's fine. I, I just uh, wanted yeah. to know if there was any, uh, you know, things that you're seeing that, um, you know, we might be able to at least take into account in our intelligence gathering that we should be thinking about going into the future here. Well, what I what I do is I don't have a chart for that. Let me see if I if I have one to bring up close to it. Maybe this will do. Um, what I do is I project I project prices by using the uh, again uh, method off of a major or intermediate low. I don't, okay. I don't have an example here I can give you, but um, okay. I also use um, the astrological aspect of it, which is um, uh, converting um, a uh, longitude on a, um, on, a, on a horoscope chart uh, for the major planets like uh, uh, Jupiter or Saturn. And I, I find out where the actual you know, mini ESs are at the, t at the time. So um, that conversion uh, is easily done. I'm not going to go over it right now with you because um, it may take a few okay. minutes. <clears throat> but it gives me a, an idea of where the market 
uh, resistance overhead is or where support is underneath. And what I have found is that often the um, minis, when they come back down to a point where uh, they're hitting a planet, a uh, Saturn line or a Jupiter line, they stop and reverse. Okay. Or if they don't so, do it, it's a major signal to, to go short again. Okay. So that and, would uh, be where? Back under the blue line or red line that you have in the well, S&P? this user. chart, um, I think it, uh, for some reason it cut, oh, it didn't cut it off. This is a, uh, my VZ Momo chart. Mm -hmm. And um, it, you can see that the, uh, the bars are trading above the blue line. That's a very short right. term right. moving average. What I, this red line here is the um, um, uh, 144 uh, day moving average. And then the bottom line, the white line is a 377 day. So okay. why, why do I use these numbers and not 200 or 50 day or 100? It's because they're Fibonacci numbers. Right. And, right. It, and uh, if you go all the way back, you, uh, the last time these uh, daily bars fell below uh, the 144 was the, the Trump low day. Okay. Yeah. What a uh, day. In a way, in a way, what what you you asked me is um, what what is my opinion of the market? The opinion of my market is that of uh, the market is that uh, uh, the powers that be are still holding holding it up strong, and yeah. uh, the only time I would get really crazy and serious about going short is if we fell down to the 144 day moving average line. Okay, and that looks like around 2400, 2410. Uh, I'd like to ask you when you're training people, uh, would you say the emphasis of your training is for shorter term scalping, swing trading, or position trading? Well, the, uh, uh, um, the, the three different charts that I've been lately using, the VZ Momo, which is this chart you see here, I changed on the screen so that you can see where the Trump low was right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see where we, like we, we fell, we actually fell below both the 144 and the 377. Yeah. But then we bounced back, obviously. <clears throat> so uh, this, this chart would be used for position trading. Okay. Um, the, uh, uh, VZ Fall Murray math chart would be used for uh, uh, scalping. Okay. And um, the other one, the last chart that we use is the uh, one we use for uh, swing trading. So yeah, I've developed three three different types of charts to uh, satisfy the, uh, uh, the trader's request for um, uh, position, swing trading, and scalping. Okay, so that was a good question. Yeah, so, uh, so, Let's uh, wrap it up with maybe another view or two of what you consider important and how people can reach you again. Maybe you could put that okay. up again and I sure uh, will. talk about it. So Okay, let me, let me quickly say this. This is one of my favorite books. It's called Zen in the Markets, written by Edward Allen Topel. He was from Chicago. He passed away, I think, about five or six years ago. He was a friend of mine because he used to come to our meetings. Uh, back in the mid 70s, I started a Sherlock Holmes club in Chicago called the Criterion Bar Association. He was one of our members. Oh, and cool. if you read this book, he used to trade on the uh, CME, by the way. Okay. Uh, and he, what he says is do not ever anticipate anything going forward. Just keep a blank mind, tabula rasa. And uh, interesting. If, yeah. you, if, you, if you don't do that, you're going to get slaughtered in the markets. And to me, that was a valuable piece of information because Gann says the same thing. Uh, uh, be neither bull nor bear. The market will tell you what to do. Um, but let me go back those to- are, uh, Those are pearls. Yes. Because I've ignored them at my own peril and, and, and have had opinions. So uh, yeah, great point. Uh, everyone should write those things down, keep it near their trade station. Right. Let me show you one other, uh, one other book. It's called Quantum Trading. If you want to learn more on how I use the uh, planet lines and convert, uh, you know, you know, astrological uh, planet longitudes into price, this book was written by Fabio Oreste. It's called Quantum Trading, and it's one of the best books out there to give you an idea how how the formula works and how you can apply it to a chart. And one more thing here, um, here's my card. Um, 
and I'm sorry, you can re, uh, re ask that one last question you had for me there. Uh, that was it, how people could get okay. a hold of you and, yeah. uh, you know, follow yeah. you on, follow Victor on Twitter. He uses his name, nothing fancy, at Victor Zubarev. And uh, there's his, e his email using a right. Yahoo. If you want to get a hold of him. Either right, way, planning... your method is good, right? Yeah, right. I'm, um, I'm inviting the public to, uh, to give me a uh, uh, drop me an email or if you have if you're on Twitter to send me a DM don't do it on the public line but send it send send a uh, DM to me on Twitter I'm looking to take on three or five more people which I can train some of these methods and if, if anybody is interested in uh, uh, scalping the uh, forex market or the or cryptocurrencies and swing trading um, uh, the other more traditional indexes uh, just give me a call. Okay, Victor. So I want to thank you once again for taking the time to edify our community and tell us a little bit about your journey and sharing what you can with things that you've developed and your methods. And uh, really appreciate you coming here today, Victor. Uh, you're my trading warrior brother, and I wish you Great success post eclipse and all the way to the next full eclipse across the United States. So, thank, uh, good, thank you, Dale. Good, good hunting, Victor. Thank you, Dale. I appreciate it. You're a, you're a hardworking uh, individual in this business, uh, and I have a lot of respect for you because you reach out to uh, help traders become uh, better at their craft. I think that's great. I appreciate that, Victor. Now, everyone, have a great weekend, face. And I'm looking forward to next week with everyone. Remember, this is your last week of summer. Go out and enjoy it. And we'll kill them next week. And most of all, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. You're very welcome, Simon and Craig and Martin. I'll see everyone next week. Thanks again, Victor. Thank you.